Hi everyone, I'm Victoria and welcome to my creative corner tucked away in the corner of my living room in the Pennine Hills of Lancashire. I'm a colour junkie who loves watercolours and mixed media and today I'm sharing the first in a colour spotlight series which focuses on a single colour across different brands. How similar or different actually are they on paper? Um, I started collecting watercolours about six years ago and during that time it's been really interesting that colours that are called the same actually can look quite different once they're laid down on the paper and um, whilst I've been learning about watercolours and doing research and things online there were very few uh, videos that I came across that actually compared um, those so that I could kind of see what I was getting before I was buying. So hopefully you find um, this really useful um, in helping you when you are actually buying colours for yourselves. So the first colour that I've chosen to focus on is Payne's Grey. I absolutely love Payne's Grey. It's probably one of the first colours that I absolutely fell in love with uh, when I first started painting all those years ago. Um, it's just such a moody, um, just such a moody colour. I, I just love it. So this was kind of the obvious choice for me to start um, this little comparison series with. So here I have, I've started swatching um, the Payne's Grey from the A Gallo watercolours. So these watercolours are made in Italy. Uh, they come in really gorgeous marbled uh, package, paper packaging um, and um, they smell amazing. She makes them with, um, I think, a drop of rosemary oil uh, and you can really smell that when you're using the paint and they are lovely paints to use. They do re-wet really easily and they are so pigmented. Um, so now I'm moving on to the Michael Harding watercolour in Payne's Grey. Um, these are made in the UK. Again, they re-wet really, really nicely and they're quite new to the market. I think Michael Harding have produced oil paints for quite a number of years um, and have just introduced this watercolour range. And I have to say, so far, I am really impressed. Um, I do really love these colours. So now I'm moving on to um, a KW Arts Payne's Grey. So this, um, these paints are made by Katie in the UK and I think are pretty much handmade to order. She has um, a, a small little Etsy shop. So you can find her on Etsy. I think the Etsy shop is called KW Arts Creations maybe. Um, so yeah she's she's got uh, some really lovely mineral colors um and yeah I'm these are relatively new to my collection so I haven't used them tons and tons um but I just think it's really there's just something really nice about buying watercolors from small independent makers Next up are the Isaro watercolours. These are handcrafted in Belgium and there are some really unique colours in the range. Uh, so if you're looking to expand your collection and maybe add some colours in there that you might not necessarily find anywhere else, these are a really good um, option to try. The Wallace Seymour watercolours are made in the UK. Um, these are traditional vintage watercolours. Uh, so they use some really unique pigments. Um, this one that I'm swatching is Payne's Grey. Um, and then this one is Payne's Grey Original. 
and um, because of those unique pigments that they use some of the colours um, can be a little bit gritty uh, once they're laid down on paper which actually gives some really lovely texture uh, they can dry a little bit hard in the pan so just put a little drop of water on the top of um, each one before use and you will then find that the colour re-wets then quite nicely The next three watercolours to be swatched, um, I've just done the Roman Schmoll Payne's Grey. This is the Daniel Smith version. And then the next one after this is the Daniel Smith Payne's Grey Blue. Again, all of these colours lay down really nicely, really pigmented. Um, so I really can't wait to see how all of these colours compare uh, on paper at the end once they dry. This one is the Schmink uh pains gray so again there's two different pains grays in the schmink range um this is um just pains gray and then the next one is pains gray bluish and you can see a definite difference between these two uh pains gray once they're on the paper um so you can see straight away here as i'm laying down that pains gray bluish that it really does have that blue uh, tone to the Payne's Grey. And last but not least is the Windsor & Newton Payne's Grey. And like I said at the beginning, this is one of the first watercolours that I owned. And... I just absolutely fell for the real moodiness of this colour. I just love it. So now the swatches are dried on paper, we can start to compare them all against each other. And you can see straight away that all of these paints drays are very slightly different. So the A Gallo one, very, very blue, uh, very indigo. The Michael Harding one, you can see um, a, the mix of a, a more neutral grey with some blue. Uh, this is the KW Arts, which again, I think leans more into that neutral grey uh, bracket. And then the Azaro, again, a bit of a mix, really, really nice granulation um, on this one. Um, I'd really like to see these paints swatched on um, some cold pressed paper. Uh, the paper that I've used is in the Fabriano Venezia sketchbook and is actually a drawing paper. Uh, so that was the Daniel Smith uh, blue a minute ago. And now this is the Roman Schmoll. And Wallace Seymour Original, I absolutely love this paint. I think it's the most unique paint grey of the bunch. Um, and just the way that that granulates is just really special. I just love that. And then this is the Wallace Seymour paint grey. Again, this, this is really different. It's got a bit of a violet tinge, I would say. Uh, really love that. And then this is the Daniel Smith's Blue. Um which isn't quite as moody as the other Daniel Smith colour, I don't think. And then the Schmink Payne's Grey, which again has that real kind of, almost like a neutral tint uh, vibe. And then the Schmink Bluish. And then finally the Windsor & Newton uh, colour. So I hope you enjoyed seeing all of those colours uh, next to each other on the page. I think you will probably agree as you look at those there that even though they're called the same thing, they don't necessarily look like that once they're on the paper. Um, so hopefully you find that useful as you add to uh, your own watercolour collections and choose the colours that you love the most. Um, Honestly, thank you so much for watching this. This is my first YouTube video and has been a long time in the making. Um, so um, I really appreciate your support, stopping by and hanging in there to this point. Um, 
if you'd like to see more colours, uh, this is going to be a series and I am going to compare some more colours across different brands. If there's any colours in particular that you'd like me to film, please put that down in the comments. Uh, a little heads up, Potter's Pink is going to be the next. Um, but definitely, you know, I'm willing, any colours that you're kind of interested to know, please just uh, let me know and I can look at filming that. I'm also in the future going to be doing some um, more project-based videos so that if you want to watch and uh, have a bit of a make-along, um, then that's going to be coming up too. And I'm going to be having a bit of a, a dive into my um, creative corner setup and organisation and um, some more of the supplies that um, I like to use that are a bit of a go-to. So I'd really appreciate it. If you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. And um, if you'd like to see any of that future content, please do subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to turn on notifications. Then you don't miss out on anything. And now I'm going to leave you with this watercolour leaf swatching using all those different paint greys colours. Uh, this is a really lovely project for you to have a go at. So please do get your paints out and have a bit of a paint along. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you next time.